So we're now joined by Kunal Nadkarni. He's the Group Oil and Gas Segment Manager, Group Protective Marketing for Hemka. Good morning, Kunal. How are you today? Good. How are you doing, Darwin? Doing good. Thank you. Uh, well, Kunal, uh, we wanted to know your thoughts and a few things about the FPS SO sector. Uh, particularly, uh, how would you assess the current state of the FPS SO sector? Well, Darwin, as you know, uh, you know, uh, in oil and gas, offshore is one of the uh, uh, major driving factors today in the oil and gas and uh, FPSO segment within the offshore is the fastest growing segment uh, in the oil and gas today. Um, so the way I see FPSO uh, segment moving forward uh, is that, I mean, it's got potential, it's, it's got uh, a lot of growth going forward. Uh, the key uh, challenges that I see in the FPSO, FPSO segment or the FPSO uh, uh, ship is actually the deployment of FPSO as well as the production of oil and gas. And um, on, the, on the deployment side and the production of oil and gas, we're seeing that all the companies, right, from the oil majors to subcontractors to oil field equipment uh, manufacturers, the OEMs, they all are working towards one main agenda, which is how do we get the, how do we produce the oil and gas in a much more effective way, in a much productive way, in a more cost competitive way, if possible. Uh, so they're always pushing the technological boundaries. We're all, always seeing some technical innovations in, in FPSO, and it's, it's a very dynamic industry uh, within the oil and gas, so to say. So you, talk, you talked about uh, innovations uh, a while ago. What interesting technologies or uh, innovations do you see uh, in particular uh, in the FPSO field? So uh, what I'd like to say is, I mean, uh, there are a few uh, innovations that we're seeing uh, in the design phase of the FPSO as well as some of the uh, capabilities of an FPSO to produce oil and gas. So as you know, Darwin, um, the traditional FPSOs that we see, that we have been seeing for the past 20 odd years, have always been a, a ship-shaped vessel, which is mainly uh, an old oil tanker that's been converted into an FPSO. They put some you know, top sides on it, and there are some processing units on it. Um, we have seen recently, in the recent years, there have been some technological changes and investments on the design side of it. Uh, for example, Seven Marine, uh, they are the first ones to actually build a uh, cylindrical FPSO. Uh, instead of a ship shape, uh, which is a completely different way of thinking and developing and producing oil and gas in the FPSO. Um, we've also seen um, uh, the first floating LNG from Shell, Perdido, where they are actually having the first FLNG uh, coming up, which is a massive investment and a massive structure by itself. It, if, if I'm not uh, uh, incorrect, which uh, it's probably about four to five soccer fields long. Mm. Uh, so just the magnitude of the whole, you know, the technical, and ob obviously with the floating LNG comes technical uh, right. concerns as well as uh, processing units, how do they fit there. Um, the other new technologies that I see uh, within the FPSO is the FPDSO, uh, dynamic producer, which is basically the first FPSO with drilling capabilities, which actually will drill for oil and gas, and then it will go into production. So these are some of the, the new uh, innovations or technical innovations that I see within the FPSO segment. Obviously, as we move forward, there'll be more innovations. Um, again, driving into trying to see how we can actually uh, maximize the production output and minimize the cost returns for the owners. These are really interesting innovations that we see lately. A uh, very good observation from your part. Uh, in your opinion, how would you see that the uh, overall uh, industry in general? Uh, I mean, I think I think uh, it's it's yet to be seen. Uh, you know, we, uh, for example, the Seven Marine, it's already in operation. It's it's doing well. It's it's uh, uh, an FPSO producing oil and gas, uh, storing, offloading, processing. Um, FLNG, uh, it's a new venture uh, with a floating, liquefying natural gas processing capability on a ship. Uh, yet to be seen how it will be, it will develop how. Um, productive would it be, how cost effective would it be, and would, would that uh, be something that would be taken forward within the industry and others actually uh, going after that. It's yet to be seen. Uh, the FPDSO, uh, again, this is my personal opinion, um, with the drilling unit, uh, I'm, I'm not 100% sure how uh, effective it would be in terms of having a drilling unit which is basically uses for a few months, it drills, and then you're really not using the drilling unit for the rest of you know 20 years of the of where you know you're actually producing the oil and gas and storing it. Uh, so again, all of these different innovations have pluses and minuses. Um, it's up to you know once they get deployed in the field and probably stay there for about 10 years, would we know 
how effective they have been and you know how much more oil production would they you know go forward with it Oh, you're, I, I, I get the impression that you're a keen observer of the developments within Asia or outside Asia. Uh, what would you think are the important lessons uh, that could be drawn from the international FPSO industry that can be applied in Asia? Uh, Asia, in my opinion, is the fastest growing oil and, oil and gas segment uh, uh, within the world. It's, you know, you talk about China, you talk about Korea, you talk about Singapore, India. Uh, they are moving forward, uh, you know, with more and more technological advancements within the FPSO as well. Um, there was a recent uh, uh, survey that I read, which I think was conducted by uh, uh, the uh, oil and gas IQ. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had, they had uh, selected a few top owners, operators, shipyards, and some contractors. Um, and the, the main theme of that was to understand what are the risks associated with FPSO industry. Um, you know, from a list of about nine or ten different risks that were associated or identified, uh, two main risks that were identified were um, subcontract management, and the other one uh, that they um, identified was um, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Managing expectations. Uh, actually, yes, managing expectations and actually understanding the specifications of FPSO fields well. So, if you look at the top two major risks that, and again, this is not something that's coming out of Asia, right? It's, it's across the globe, and you've been talking with uh, you know FPSO owners and operators who are actually in the field. Both of these, in my opinion, are very closely related with Asia. With subcontractor management, as you know, uh, most of the subcontractors and contractors are based in Asia, mm -hmm. be it Singapore, be it China, be it Korea. Um, so really managing contractors, subcontractors, and the whole value chain is a big risk um, that I see, uh, which is associated with Asia. Um, and it's a challenge how that would be overcome. Um, on the other side, when you're talking about understanding the actual accurate specifications of the field, uh, again, it's related back to Asia, where you have, uh, you know, Singapore and Korea as the main hubs of shipbuilding uh, yards, which actually uh, work with the owners to define the specifications and get onto the specifications. So, uh, just to answer your question, Asia, in my opinion, I mean, it's it's one of the growing segments, the most growing segments within oil and gas, and the risks that were uh, that came out of the study were pretty much apt to Asia. So, it's it will be one of the most crucial. Uh, segments or, or the regions in the world that will actually define how the way the industry moves forward within FPSO. Now looking ahead, how will the FPSO sector evolve in the next couple of years in your opinion? Uh, the, the growth that has been set for the FPSO is, is tremendous. I mean it's, it's growing co continuously today and I see no signs of it to, to, to you know, decline for whatever reason. So it will be keeping on growing. Um, the way I see FPSO uh, from the deployment side of it is we will be majorly seeing deployments of FPSOs in areas such as West Africa and Brazil. Petrobras being you know, leading with almost about 40 to 45 percent of the total FPSO deployments uh, across the globe. Um, the way I see is that um, within the FPSO, or if you may expand the, the nature to other floating units, I think FLNG would probably be something that will steal the limelight within the, all the other floating production. And the reason for that is that we're seeing more and more countries across the globe understanding uh, what their natural gas resources are, trying to expand on their natural gas resources. Uh, and FLNG with liquefying natural gas will probably, in my opinion, be one of the standing points within the floating units across the globe moving forward. Right. Very well said. Thank you so much. Kunal Natkarni He's the Group Oil and Gas Segment Manager, Group Protective Marketing for Hempel. Have a great day. Thank you, Darwin. Thanks for having me.